concerned, but fortunately we caught the tumor early, and that's a big positive. That's good. So when? As soon as Dr. Winslow can schedule a surgery, we'll get you in there. How's Wednesday morning? 6 a.m. Wow, so soon? Sooner the better. Listen to me, Kyle. You're strong. I know you can do this. All right? I'll be with you every step of the way. You guys have my cell phone number. You can call me whenever you need. Okay. All right? Thanks. Thank Hang you. Hang in there. Just a second, okay? Better get going. Your mother's making brunch for us at the condo. Wonderful. I just gotta log this in. They seem like two very dedicated doctors. Oh, well, they are very dedicated doctors. But sometimes when you believe so much in what you do, it's hard to find anything left for your loved ones. And that's Maggie. That's Maggie. Every two hours. Yeah. Well, are you in a lot of pain? Oh, I do. Hi. Good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, not a problem. How'd it go with Kyle and Janet? Well, they took it pretty well, considering. They're such sweet people. And you have wonderful kids to go see them on a Sunday. Okay. Sunday, Monday, what difference does it make? If you never turn off your cell phone. You got it. If I promise someone I'll be there, then I'll be there. Whenever it is. Well, my patients need me too, but I still manage to take some time off. Onion or poppy seed? What is that? That is a very famous painting. The liberation of St. Peter from prison. We're going to see the original when we go to Europe next month. Oh, God willing. Where is it, Paris? Rome, the Vatican. We're going to be there for Easter. I cannot wait to hear the bells ringing at St. Peter's. They say it's very inspiring. Maybe it'll inspire you two to finally start a family. Stop. I don't know about this trip, Mom. It's a very busy time for me. It's always a busy time. Dr. DeSanto. Yeah. This is Annie, what's wrong? Well, do you have a fever? Well, is your sister there with you? That's good. Maggie can't go on like this, and neither can her marriage. And Rose is praying for a miracle. Yes, and she might get one, but not the one she's praying for. Pigeons out of here? Pigeons? Pigeons. Piccione. Huh? Piccione? Dove li piccione, eh? No. <laughs> oh. Hello, I'm Monica. I'm here about the job interview. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> You're so prompt. The doctor will like that. 
The doctor's my daughter. Did you know that? Yes, I had heard. And she's a stickler for getting things done on time. Didn't come from my side. I'm a case that I said I kind of girl myself. <laughs> Have a seat, honey. Frankly, between her private practice and the work she does in the hospital here, well, just between you and me and the lamppost, it's her marriage that needs some quality time. That's why you're here. I thought I was filling in for you. Oh, yeah, you are. You are. I just told her that if I didn't go to Europe now, I never would. So I went out and bought a ticket. And of course, she said I couldn't go by myself. And her husband said she can't go without him. So voila, we have a family vacation. <laughs> now we just have to keep our fingers crossed so he doesn't back out. Look. They seem like a lovely couple. They are. But very progressive, too. Maggie's kept her last name. And Brian's a neurologist, a doctor of the brain. Not to be confused with a urologist, which is the kind that killed my Freddie. May he rest in peace. 20 years ago, he went to some fancy schmancy specialist who told him he had a lazy kidney. By the time we found out it was prostate cancer, it was too late. I'm so sorry. Thank you, dear. Do you know there's always a silver lining if you look hard enough? Because of what happened to her father, Maggie decided to become a doctor. I hear she's a very good one. Of course she is. She's your daughter. <laughs> Have a bagel. You're hired. Stay calm, Annie. I'm calling for an ambulance. I'll page Dr. Michaels. She and I will be waiting for you at the ER. No. The baby is not going to die. We're not going to let that happen. Excuse me, Mom. Rose, are you all right? Never felt better. Your call is important to us. Please stay on the line. Maggie? The insurance company's got me on hold again. But I am putting Annie in the hospital whether they like it or not. I'll send up one of my Rose specials. She's going to need more than a prayer, Mom. We got to get the baby out. She's got to let me treat the leukemia. She never let me do the chemo. Well, if there's a chance it can affect the baby, I don't blame her. There is such a thing as acceptable risk. Not to Annie. When you're a mother, you'll understand. And I may never understand. Bite your tongue. Right now, marriage is enough for me to handle. Last night, we got in this big thing over where to put that damn painting you gave us. Well, marriage is about compromise. And watch your mouth. I am not having this conversation right now. Excuse me, Rose, your travel agent's here. Maggie, this is Monica. She's going to take care of our office while we're gone. It's a pleasure to meet you. Mom, we have to talk about this trip. Your passport came this morning. I'll hold on to it for safekeeping. Mom. <laughs> oh. Oh, no, 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 no. You're not going to get away with that. Anytime the conversation doesn't go her way, she has a dizzy spell. Hi, Tanya. This is Dr. DeSanto again. Listen, I'm really tired of getting the runaround from you people. No, don't you dare put me on hold again. I have an emergency here. Yes. 773-44430. Right. I have your plane tickets, your airport shuttle information, your hotel reservations for London and Paris, but there's a few options in Rome that I think we should go over. It doesn't matter. Whatever's closest to St. Peter's. Okay. Brian! Hey, Rose. This is our travel agent, Gloria. It's Brian. Uh, don't tell me. Winslow, Dr. Brian, seat 27A. I've got your plane tickets right here. Hold on. Uh, didn't Maggie tell you we're not going? What? It's nonsense. Would you excuse us, Gloria? Last night, we had a fight. Yeah, I know. About the painting. It started with that and ended with Maggie announcing she wasn't going on the trip because her patients need her. And now I'm getting the... Silent treatment? Oh, don't worry about that. I can fix that. Rosa, are you okay? You don't look mm, so good. I just... I feel worn down. I think I get anemic. 
Anemia is a symptom, not a diagnosis. Why don't we have you stop by the lab and do a blood workup? No. no, I'm fine. <laughs> you know what? Maybe you're right. I hate going down there by myself. Would you mind taking me, Brian? Now? Yeah. Sure, let me go to my office. Okay. Is everything all right? Everything's fine. I just remembered that Maggie ought to be down there right about now. God works in mysterious ways, and so does Rose. You hold on to those tickets, because we are going on this trip. Not everybody who gets their blood drawn from such a big shot. Well, for you, Rose, anything. There you are, Rose. Are you all right? Oh, fine. Oh, Brian, this is Monica. She's going to cover the office for me while we're on our trip. I'm telling you, Rose, it's not going to happen. It is, too. I'm going to talk her into it. No, you won't. I'm looking for Annie's file. Oh, right here. Uh, thank you. Excuse me, we're going to need to repeat these lab stat. Yes, ma'am. What are you doing down here? Well, she's feeling a little tired. I figured I'd do some blood work. Just a touch of anemia. Thank God Brian's here to help. It sounds more like a case of meddling, Mom. Now, I've about had it with you. Dr. DeSanto. Monica, will you go to ER and page Dr. Michaels again? She's a neonatal. She should have been here 10 minutes ago. Aren't you being a little harsh? Harsh? I have a woman coming in who won't follow protocol because she says her baby comes first and an insurance company who won't let me keep her in the hospital where we might be able to save both their lives. Honey, you do the best you can. After that, it's que sera, sera. No. Maggie, she's just trying to help. Doctor, the ambulance is here. Coming How are you doing? Not too good. Well, let's see what we can do about that. Dr. Michaels is scrubbing up for a C-section. At seven months, this baby has a really good chance. I can't feel the baby. Do I have a Doppler? Oh. Sorry if it's a little cold. Let's have a listen here. What's that? Huh? <laughs> it's strong. Okay. You gonna let me start this chemo as soon as they get her delivered? Whatever you say, Doctor. Okay. Let's get you moving. It says it's speeding two. It gets fifteen minutes. Save my baby. No news yet, Monica. Do you like some coffee, Rose? No, I've been drinking it all day and I haven't done a darn thing. I'm so tired. I guess we all are. What are you knitting? Oh, it's a christening blanket for Annie's baby. I made one of these for Maggie. She was such a sensitive child and so temperamental. She wouldn't go to sleep unless I wrapped her in that blanket and sang her favorite song. Do they roast? May I try? Ooh. When I was just a little girl, I asked my mother, What will I be? Will I be pretty? Will I be rich? Here's what she said to me. Que sada sada. Whatever will be, will be. The future's not ours to see. Que sera, sera. Que sera. The neonatal team just took the baby to the intensive care unit. 
She's on a ventilator. She's touch and go right now. It's a girl? I bet she's a fighter just like Annie. Annie didn't make it. No. Thank you, I'm sorry. Once she went septic, she was hypotensive. We just could not get her pressure back up after that. Annie asked you to save her baby, and you did. As far as I'm concerned, that's a miracle. Don't, okay? You're not helping. You have to believe that. Believe what, Mom? What do you want me to believe in? You want me to believe in Kay, Sarah, Sarah? You want me to believe in God? You want me to believe in crossing my fingers? What? You don't really believe in anything. It doesn't matter to you. You just pick whatever works out best. God, faith, luck, it's all the same. I believe in science. Something real. Something that works. And if it doesn't work, I have to take responsibility for it. I don't go around giving God credit when things go right, and I don't go around blaming faith when things go wrong. I'm sorry you feel that way. You know what, Mom? This work situation is not good for us. I'm sorry, Mom. Monica, I'm gonna need you to work full time from now on. But Maggie... First thing tomorrow morning, nine o'clock. I'm sorry, Mom. I'm sorry. the right thing to do. It's been coming for a long time. Maybe. But it was nice to have your mother around there. Somebody who actually believed in things like angels and miracles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's the Kmart shopper of positive thinking. She goes up and down the aisles, tossing every feel-good philosophy into her cart. What's wrong with that? It's dangerous, Brian. And it doesn't make sense. Either you believe in something or you don't can't have it both ways. Where are you going? I gotta get out of here for a little while. Well. I guess I shouldn't have expected you to understand what I'm going through right now. What are you going through that I don't go through? You can't be serious. You're a neurosurgeon, Brian. You don't treat patients, you treat brains. That is beyond insulting. They're under sedation when you see them. They can't argue with you, or cry, or fall apart. You have office hours where you examine CAT scans and lab reports, and you schedule your surgeries around your golf games. You think you're a more dedicated doctor than I am? No. You just don't have to deal with the real world as much as I do. You don't have to fight with insurance companies or generate a ridiculous amount of paperwork to justify a treatment plan. You don't have to convince someone to have chemo when you know it's a form of poison. Because until a real cure comes along, it's the only chance they've got. I mean... Show a little compassion here. You're gonna talk to me about compassion after the way you treated your mother? Why do you always stick up for her? No, the real question is, Maggie, why does she always stick up for you? She's your biggest fan. She devoted her whole life to making you happy. And that's supposed to make me feel better? When I know there's a little baby sitting in an incubator fighting for her life, who's gonna be an orphan because I failed. You did everything medically possible for Annie. No, I didn't! She wouldn't let me! That was her choice. Maggie, you're great with your patience. You make them feel loved and like there's nothing you wouldn't do for them. That's what a doctor does. It's also what married people are supposed to do. You're a good person. You're a great doctor. I just wish you'd fight for us as hard as you fight for your patients.
Yes, you should receive that tomorrow. My pleasure. Pardon me? Of course I'll tell Rose you said hello. Bye. Good morning. Oh, good morning. I have a few messages for you. And there's someone from the hospital board waiting in your office. Internal auditing. Great. <laughs> Just what I need this morning. Thanks. Hello? Hello, my name is Tess. Tess, I have a problem with internal auditing. I'm a good doctor and I resent having to defend my actions. Well, whenever there's an unexpected death, we must investigate. For insurance purposes. Yes, and for humanitarian purposes just as well. Here we go. Do you think you should have brought the patient in earlier? How could I? The insurance company would not approve the hospital stay. If I hadn't stuck my neck out, who knows if that baby would even be alive right now. Dr. DeSanto, we're well aware of what a fine doctor you are. But even the best sometimes suffer burnout. I am not suffering and I do not burn out. And there is no evidence to suggest otherwise. Well, that's not what I heard from some of the members of the hospital staff. I may have had a problem with my office manager yesterday, but it's been taken care of. You took care of it in front of your staff and other patients. What do you want me to say? Nothing yet. But there's something I want you to think about. You're in a very stressful field. One where losing a patient is a part of the landscape. And I don't believe you've given yourself an outlet to deal with the loss and frustration. I don't have time to deal with my loss and frustration. All I can do is just push through and keep on going. But it's getting harder to push through, isn't it? You want to know why? Turn around, doctor. You're dragging that loss and frustration around behind you. Well, to tell the truth, I've been better. I just came by to get this stuff out of your way. <laughs> I always have fresh flowers for the waiting room. It makes it nice and bright. And this, uh -huh. Maggie made this for me in Girl Scout <laughs> on Mother's Day. Yeah, maybe I'll leave it here. You know, patients seem to like it. Oh. oh. Rose? Oh. Rose, you all right? Your mother's not doing well. You think I picked up the flu? Oh. Look, Mom, I just, I can't deal with you right now. Brian walked out on me last night, and I just don't think I can handle another one of your dramas. Oh, Maggie. I had my fingers crossed for you, too. I even lit a candle. Stop. Just stop. Hello, Dr. DeSanto's office. It's Brian. Yes. What? There's got to be a mistake. Take a look at the slime. Oh, my God. Look at those blasts. I wonder if she's tired. Mom, I 
didn't want to wake her. Mom, wake up. Mm -hmm. Do it. Oh. I must have dozed off. Was I snoring? Mom, listen. Listen to me. We got your blood work back. And there's a reason why you've been so tired. Your white blood count is through the roof. I'm going to check you into the hospital right now. Oh, no. I'm just run down. Will you get a wheelchair for me? No, I can walk. No, you can't, no. Mom. You can't. Don't worry, Monica. I've got the best doctor in the world. You need to eat, Rose. I'm not hungry. I try to give the pigeon some of my food. It looks like they don't eat on this side of the hospital either. Oh, well. Que sera, sera. Do you mean that? What? Que sera, sera. Whatever will be, will be. Oh, I just say that all the time. But do you mean it? Well, yeah, sure. You can't go crazy about worrying what's going to happen. The future's not ours to see. So you, you got to leave it up to fate. But you also say that God moves in mysterious ways. You believe in miracles, but you also cross your fingers and you throw salt over your shoulder. You got to cover the bases, honey, you know? What's wrong with that? Faith is not about covering your bases. Faith is about trusting God above all else when you're in trouble. You think this is serious, don't you? Yes, I do. <laughs> when you get to be my age, death always seems so close anyway that you do whatever you can not to think about it. <laughs> you tell jokes, you plan trips. Even try to convince your kids to give you some grandchildren. Anything to keep your mind from the inevitable. But it still comes. That's why you need to have faith. I have all kinds of faith. I know. But I'm talking about one kind. In these times when storms come up quickly and you need a lamppost to cling to, you don't want to waste your time deciding which lamppost that's going to be. That's not a time to put your faith in luck or fate, Rose. Only in God. Hey, Monica. Hey, Mom. How you doing? I have a feeling you're about to tell me. I'll see you later, Rose. Okay, honey. Give it to me straight. Okay, here's the deal. That test you took was a flow cytometry. Annie had that when she first came into the hospital. Right. And the test results are the same. Isn't that strange? How many times have I typed the word leukemia on somebody else's file? I'm much too busy to die. That's a good attitude, Mom. Okay, let's talk about what we're gonna do. First, we drill a tiny hole in the skull. Then we insert a plastic bubble about the size of a quarter. Oh. You okay? <laughs> Fine. Go ahead, Brian. We thread a tube into the ventricle from the bubble, which delivers chemo straight into the spinal fluid. And this bubbly thingy, where does that go? Right here. Oh, no, I don't think so. I bought a lovely hat, and I'm not going to show up in Rome with something sticking out of my head. 
Mom, you're not going anywhere except back to the oncology ward to start your treatments. Europe is not going to happen right now. Oh, but it is. I'm going to get through this, honey. I'm going to do what I have to do, and it's going to work, because God's going to make it work. I believe that now. And I made a decision. No more que sera, sera, or knocking on wood or crossing my fingers. It's times like this when the rubber meets the road. You got to make a decision on who's driving. If you don't want the cranial, your other option is a lumbar puncture. I don't want to lie to you. It's painful and you'll be awake. And either way, you're going to have to deal with nausea and you're probably going to lose your hair. I can afford to shed a few pounds. And if I lose my hair, I'll cover it with my hat. <laughs> well, let's get going, because we got a plane to catch. Day is today. Thursday. It's Good Friday. I don't know what's so good about it. She hasn't called you at all? No. We don't talk much these days. But don't you worry about us, Rose. You just concentrate on getting better. Good afternoon, Doctor. What are you doing in my office? I'm just checking in with you. Well, I haven't killed anybody in five weeks, if that's what you're asking. Maggie, you haven't had a vacation in ten years. Your mother has leukemia, and your husband has left you. Don't you think maybe, just maybe, you need a break? No, I need to be here with my mom. Maggie, your mom's not in her room. Rose, where are you going? Oh, Gloria. I'm going to the airport. This Sunday is Easter, and I'm going to be in Rome. You're not well enough to travel. Nonsense, honey. I'm definitely on the mend. And if I get to Europe, then Maggie and Brian will have to come over together just to bring me back. <laughs> you still have the tickets? Yes. Oh, good. Oh, there he is. Sorry to JFK. I don't think that's a good idea, Rose. How did you know my name was Rose? Maggie, 
Right. We're here, Rose. <laughs> it's gonna be okay, Mom. You made it. Think Gloria will give you your tickets and your passport? Here's my hat. I've got it, Rose. Oh, thank you, Monica. I want to bear it from the plane. Oh, Monica. He was so sweet to come and see us all. Huh. Where am I? Help me, Monica. That's why I'm here, Rose. Oh, I've got to get to the airport. Mom, stay calm. Oh, no, wait, wait. Don't let them take off without me. Maggie, it's almost Easter. Mom, it's okay. familiar that beautiful glow you look like the angel in the painting I'm a different kind of angel an angel Monica was right I made the right decision I chose the right lamppost right <laughs> yes you did Rose Monica, I thought... Yes, I know, Andrew. But I have a message for Rose. Could you give us a few minutes, please? Of course. You know him? I thought it was the medication. Because I thought he said he was an angel. He is an angel, Rose. An angel of death. What? I am an angel, too. I knew it. I knew it. There was something about you not normal. Uh, no offense. Well, now you know. Well, isn't this something? Two angels. I mean, I prayed for a miracle, but nothing like this. Not, not for me, but for my daughter. Yes, you prayed for a miracle for Maggie. But then you didn't trust God to make it happen. You took matters into your own hands. I wanted to hear the bells of St. Peter's. I, I thought that would give her some faith. Rose, you don't have to go around the world to find God. And you can't schedule him to appear to someone else. God works on each heart individually. And he speaks when someone is ready to listen. Well... <laughs> It's going to take more than a wild story by her crazy mother about two angels to make an impression on her. I mean, no offense to God, but she's a tough cookie. Well, he must know that. He made her, right? Yes, he did. And he made you too. And he loves you, Rose. He loves you so very much. Yeah. And he has heard your prayers, all of them. Give him time to answer them in his own way. Okay. Okay. And Rose, he didn't forget your Easter dream. Oh. I hear them. Oh. oh. Happy Easter, Rose. Oh.
Mom. Please don't die. Please. I love you. There's so much I should have said to you while I had the chance. It's not too late. It's never too late to tell someone what you feel in your heart. What are you doing here? I'm here to help you understand that you've got to love and appreciate the people in your life while they're still around and not just take their love for granted. I don't have time to listen to this. You don't have time for a miracle? What miracle? My m mom believed in miracles. What good did it do for her? Look at her face. You know what that is? Peace. The peace that comes when you put your life wholly and completely in God's hands. Peace? She's dying. She's not going to get to go on her dream trip. God didn't cure her. Let me ask you a question, Maggie. Have you ever seen a miracle? No. Are you sure? Yes. Why? Because miracles happen around you every day. Name one. Annie's baby. That wasn't a miracle. That was skill. Doctors saved that baby, not God. Who guides the doctor's hand, Maggie? Don't you know that God works through you? Who are you to speak for God? I'm an angel. God wants you to know he's very proud of the way you've dedicated your life to healing the sick and caring for those you can't heal. And he wants to work with you today, tomorrow, and every day for the rest of your life if you'll just let him You're crazy. And I work alone. There's been a new development, Angel Boy. You've been reassigned. Yes, ma'am. I'm glad to hear that. Dr. DeSanto? You gotta look at this. Doesn't make sense, run it again. I did, several times. And I checked to make sure it was the right smear. Maggie, what's going on? I don't know. According to these results, Mom's white count is back to normal. Brian, that doesn't just happen. People don't spontaneously cure themselves. Well, it happens sometimes. Yeah, but rarely. Oh my God. It's really true. Maggie, what is it? Brian, do you see an angel? What? Oh. Ciao, bambini. Come va? Thank you for your many blessings, for the roof over our heads, for our continued good health. We thank you for this glorious meal and the hands that prepared it. Especially Uncle Reggie's peach cobbler. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we thank you, Lord, particularly for our, for our family. Now, Lord, please bless this bread. And bless this meal. 
because it's most definitely time to eat. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 this right here now? <laughs> so, Martin, have you heard anything about your promotion yet? Uh, the deal closes this week. That phone will be ringing any time. Well, it sounds like uh, checks in the mail to me. Uh, oh. uh, you have to believe, George, okay. and you have to believe that that check will be very big when it comes. Uh, I believe now. Well, it better be, especially the way your ex-wife goes through your money. Now, now, come on. Did they have supper together every Sunday? They did miss one 25 years ago. Yes, the Sunday that Ruby and Martin Sr. died in that automobile crash. Yeah, so, Aunt Charlotte, I saw some travel brochures on your desk. Uh, never mind about that. Mama says Clarence is taking you to Hawaii. No, he is not. We are just friends from church. <laughs> See, I have this nephew that works at the uh, travel agency over at Ann Arbor. Mm -hmm. So I just ask him to hook Charlotte up with one of those cheap seats so that um, after her retirement, we were... Uh, oh, my retirement? What does he talk about retirement? I've been going over on Charlotte's retirement plan, and there is just no upside to her teaching another year. But the school won't be the same without you there. Reggie, I cannot keep pushing to 65 and drop dead of a heart attack before I have smelled a few roses. Reggie, what's wrong? I'm not hungry. Oh, come on now. You're not going to finish your supper? Tell me you don't want none of your own piece of <laughs> Thanks, thanks. You okay? Uh, I'm fine. You ever been to Hawaii, Uncle Reggie? Hawaii? I've never been out of Detroit. <laughs> well, it's, it's kind of nice that Aunt Charlotte gets to go and Uncle Martin's getting that promotion. Oh, yeah, it's a great day. And Vaughn! Coming. He doesn't really think it's a great day. No, he doesn't. Human beings often say things that they don't mean, Gloria. But why wouldn't he be happy that everybody's dreams are coming true? Because everybody's dreams are coming true, except his. When you walk down the road, heavy burden, I will rise and I will walk with you. I'll walk with you till the sun don't even shine. Walk with you every time I tell you I'll walk with you. Believe me, I'll walk with you. No displays of affection to students. I'll tell you, if I can't put an encouraging hand on some child's shoulder, I might as well teach by telephone. Oh, I know. Oh, well, at least you're getting out. Maybe I ought to look for something else, too. Well, we can't both leave Reggie behind here. Uh, nobody's forcing Reggie to be a janitor. He's an adult. He's had all kinds of opportunities over the years. It's his own fault he's not living up to his potential. Charlotte? Charlotte. You're just the person I've been looking for. I'm Tess. Hello. Do I know you? No, but I know you. The Hunter family has quite a legacy around here. And you must be Eleanor. Yeah, that's right. Well, what can I do for you, Tess? Oh, I've been hired as the interim choir director when you retire. But I'm going to be here until the end of the semester. Good, then that'll give us plenty of time to make sure you don't leave any unfinished business behind. 
And I wanna show you all my love Cause how I feel is so real I wanna show you Show, show you, show you, show you And I wanna show you all my love Cause how I feel it's so real, I wanna show you. Oh, hold up. Derby should keep coming in too early, man. Right, man. You stepping all up on my leg. What up, Reggie? Heads up, guys. Come on. I wish they'd focus that much on their studies. Oh, come on, Dr. Winston. Some people are born for science, some people are born for singing. Yeah. Reggie, this is Andrew. Andrew. Hi. Hi. Hello. Andrew will be working with you since Leon's out for his operation. Cool. Andrew, you're in good hands. Okay, all right. Thank you. I want to show you. I want to show you. Man's as tone deaf as they come. <laughs> Let me show you around. All right. So I hear that your brother Martin is speaking here this morning. Yeah, yeah. He gives a uh, speech every career day. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, he's really smart. He's really smart. He's going to be a vice president of the Detroit Metro Bank soon. Yeah, yeah, we all always knew he could do it. Well, if you uh, want to go hear him, I'll cover for you. Really? Yeah. Okay, I just might do that. All right. Great, thanks. Thanks. Next in line. You must be Monica. I'm Martin Hunter. Nice to meet you, Mr. Hunter. Come on in. Sorry to keep you waiting out there. Um, here, have a seat. Thank you. But I thought that Human Resources was hiring a... Uh, uh... A person of color. Frankly, yes. This is a, a very ethnic community, Monica. Whoever replaces me has to make their customers feel like they're dealing with someone who understands the community. But I do understand, Mr. Hunter. And I believe that a person's character is more important than the color of their skin, whether you're giving them a loan or interviewing them for a job. Touche. Confidence is also very important in putting together a loan package. Like the one you put together for the old town redevelopment project. Ah, exactly. <laughs> Biggest deal this bank's ever seen. Congratulations. Thank you. your intonation tonight. <laughs> You're gonna miss them, aren't you? More than I'm ready to admit. <laughs> you know, nobody tells these kids they have to take music classes, Tess. They come in here because they want to be here. That's very gratifying. I'm sure. In 40 years, I've had nine kids become music teachers, two opera singers, one composer, and a few thousand just looking to have some fun. That's a great gift, being able to inspire young people to follow their dreams. Even if you're not sure they're the right dreams. Well, we can only teach them, Tess. We can't choose their dreams for them. No, we can't, baby. I don't know what G-Dog rules, but it surely isn't spelling. So, your uh, brother and your sister went to school here, right? Oh, yeah. My whole family went to Northeastern. My sister Eleanor teaches social studies here, and uh, my aunt Charlotte is the music teacher. Well, for the rest of the semester, anyway. So musical talent runs in the family, huh? I, uh, I saw your singing trophy in that display case. State vocal champ, 1975. Uh, don't mean nothing. Nothing? What? You know that's whack, Uncle Reggie. He was good enough to get an audition with Barry Gordy. Advon, get to class. Barry Gordy was the guy that started Motown Records. He could have made Uncle Reggie a star. I said get to class. <sighs> Whoa. Motown. It's very impressive. Eh, it's no big deal. I wasn't much older than you when I lost my parents in a, in a car crash. I was the oldest and had to finish raising my younger sister and brother. Now, I had two choices. I could become a victim and give up my dreams, or 
I could stay strong, keep my family together, and fix my eyes on the prize. I realized then that life is like rafting down a river. Sometimes the water is calm, sometimes the relaxed, sometimes the current pulls it. Hi, baby. I'm Tess. I'm new here. Sometimes I'm Reggie, and I'm not. I can see that, yes. Very impressive. Love and being prepared for both. Okay? Questions? Yes. So, uh, how could I be a GQ banker? I mean, you got an application or something? <laughs> <laughs> well, you just don't walk in and become a banker. I, I went to college like the rest of my family did. I worked hard to pay for it. I cleaned toilets at night and went to classes during the day. Well, if your whole family's so smart, then how come your brother's still cleaning toilets? <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. There's no shame in being a custodian. I believe the way Martin Luther King did, that no matter what a man is called on to do, even if it means cleaning toilets, he should do it so well that all the angels in heaven should rejoice. Now, my brother is a jack of many trades. And no matter what he does, he always gives it his best. And I'm proud of that. Thanks for having me. The way you answered that question about your brother was very moving. Well, I suppose I've had lots of practice um, explaining my brother. It's hard to imagine that in such a successful family, he's had to struggle so much to find his way. Everybody has to struggle. You just still have to make the right choices. Mr. Hunter, Steve Stoker, an investigator from the Michigan Bank Examiner's Office. Yeah? This is a court order authorizing me to take custody of all your files on the downtown redevelopment project. What? Why? Richard Davis, the principal partner in the project, has been charged with investor fraud. What does that have to do with Mr. Hunter? Well, I guess that's what we're going to have to find out. He's been going through those files for two days now. What the hell is he looking for? Maybe you should consider getting a lawyer. I have a friend who could help. I haven't done anything wrong, Monica. Getting a lawyer would just make me look guilty. Moment of your time, Martin? Uh, sure. Oh, she's fine. Listen, about this investigation... Walter, you know these charges are absurd. Well, it still puts the board of directors in an awkward position. Martin, it calls into question the judgment of our senior loan officer. Yes, sir. We'll just have to uh, wait and see what happens. Maybe I'm going to need that lawyer. I'll make the call. You need to get going. It's almost 3.30. Oh, I, I can't. I, I, I can't deal with that now. I... You promised your sister. Okay. I'll be back in an hour. I don't see the need to have two retirement parties. I think the students and teachers should have just one big celebration. Well, what about a barbecue in the gym or maybe even a dance? Too much fuss. Well, I guess we could just call it a surprise party. Aunt Charlotte. What do you want us to do? Just let me go quietly. For heaven's sakes, you're not dying. What about a concert? A concert? Yeah, yeah. With all the music you love, and we could also ask back some of your uh, successful students to perform? Yes, that's a great idea. And you should be one of them. No, 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 I can't. And why not? You were the state vocal champion in 1975. And your family. No, I just thought it would be something that Aunt Charlotte would like. Let's not push Reggie to sing if he's not comfortable. No, I'd love to hear Reggie sing. And I haven't heard you sing in years. What do you think, Charlotte?
Uh, well, I, I... I'm not sure. Well, I've got a district meeting to go to, so why don't you take a day or two and think about it? Yeah, that's a good idea. And uh, if a concert is what you want on Charlotte, well, we'll figure out who to get. Hmm? On Charlotte. Look, you know, I don't... I don't even have to tell you this. You, you know that I would do anything for you. It's just... I know. It's just the... I know, Reggie. And don't you think another thing about it. It makes you wonder what happened to the state vocal champion of 1975. Hi, I'm so sorry I'm late. I spent all morning in the law library. I ran had to apply for a library card, but the computer wouldn't accept my address. Go figure. But this nice lady let me check books out anyway, so here I am. Thanks for waiting. Martin, this is Gloria. Uh, I don't know whether to say hello or dial 911. <laughs> I get that a lot. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, Monica filled me in on your situation, and I would love to take your case. Well, hopefully there won't be a case. I just want to know where I stand legally. Oh, uh, well, even with no collusion on your part, there is some legal precedent holding a bank officer responsible for decisions made with fraudulent information. In the case of Thomas versus the state of... Oh, okay. You're hired. Great. <laughs> Whoa, now that's a beautiful watch. My father gave it to me. It uh, means a lot to me. Yeah, I know what you mean. I got this old baby grand piano from my mother when she died. She used to play that thing every night when I was a kid. And you used to sing along? Oh, yeah, I used to love to sing. So, uh, what song did you sing for Barry Gordy? Well, my friends thought I should sing a Smokey Robinson song. You know, but I... I wanted to do something that he wouldn't expect, you know, something to make him remember me. So I did this, uh, this Broadway song, The Impossible Dream. So, did you get his attention? Apparently not. Well, you know, the first try, that's always the hardest. Yeah, that was my first and last. You just gave it up? I figured, look, I sang for the best. Why waste my time with the rest? Because it was your dream. Well... Mama wanted me to go to college and make something out of myself, you know. Like Martin? Yeah, like Martin. And I messed that up, too. But he's always there for me. You know, all he ever asks is that I do my best. So I do my job, pay my way, and every Sunday, I make a damn good peach cobbler. <laughs> It's been a long time since I sat down to a meal like this. I got it. I've made a decision. Reggie, it would mean the world to me if you would sing at my retirement concert. Oh, Charlotte, I, I don't know if I can do that. Mr. Stoker? Sorry for the interruption, folks. Uh, Mr. Hunter, I need to speak with you. Well, I'll be in my office 9 o'clock Monday morning. I'm afraid you won't. I have a warrant here for your arrest. How can they set my bail at a half a million dollars? It's outrageous. Well, there has been a recent trend toward harsher rulings in public corruption cases. You need to post 10% of the bail amount. I don't have $50,000. That's not what the prosecution is saying. What are you talking about? These are photocopies of checks made from Richard Davis's personal account to you. They have your signature endorsing them on the back. For a total of $61,000. I've never seen these before in my life. I certainly never endorsed them. These are forgeries. Why would he do this to me? Well, if what you're saying is true, and Mr. Davis knew he was defrauding you and the bank, 
Maybe he just wanted a fall guy in case he got caught. So he wrote these phony checks to make it look like I was selling him the loan, like I was on the take. I'm afraid that's exactly what it looks like. That's great. That's just great. Where are we going to get $50,000 for bail? Well, I've got my Hawaii money. No, no, you work too hard for that. I've got uh, 1600 in Super Saver miles. We could pawn Mama's old silver and china settings. We are not going to make 50000 selling teacups. Where are you on the mortgage with this house? Well, we could, we could squeeze out another 10000 in equity, but uh, that's about it. There's nothing left to Mom and Daddy's estate. Right. I wasted all that flunking out of college. Come on, Reggie. I'll get it. I'm definitely not needed here. Hey. Hi. I'm here to talk about what you're going to sing at your Aunt Charlotte's concert. Oh. I can't even think about that right now. Oh? Why not? My family doesn't need a concert. We need money. What you need is to stop focusing on what you don't have and start using what you do. You know what? You're right. Can we do this tomorrow? There's something I need to do. So, how much do you think I could get for it? Well, I'll need to find the serial number. Uh -huh. But if this is a 1914 Steinway, it's worth at least $40,000. $40,000? That's right. Reggie? What are you doing? Look, I'm going to sell this piano and help Martin out with his bail money. You can't do that. Why not? I don't have any use for it. Reggie? Look. Every time I look at this piano, all I see is Mama playing it for me. It always reminds me that I never amounted to anything, and I never will. That's not true. Oh, yes, it is. But, but $40,000? For the first time in my life, I can help Martin. I can, I can do what he's always done for me. We won't be selling today. Well, after you folks sort it out, my number's on the card. Look, I will be calling you. Good. I'll make you a nice deal. So, Aunt Charlotte, what, what, what was that all about? Reggie, there's something I need to tell you. I... Uh, I couldn't live with myself if I let you part with this piano from your mama without knowing the truth. The truth? What truth? What, what is she talking about? Barry Gordy did call back. What? He wanted to give you a tryout with one of his new groups. It was it was right after your parents died. Martin took the call. He he answered the phone. He told Barry Gordy that your folks had died and that you weren't interested anymore than you'd be going to college instead. Ah, oh, Charlotte. Why didn't you say anything? Because... I... Oh, God, forgive me. I, I thought Martin was right. I, I, I thought... I thought that you would go off to college and, and, and be a music major, and then from there you, you could do whatever you wanted. I, I never imagined... I, I quit singing. I quit because I thought I was no good. Nobody ever told you you were no good. We just never told you you were. What's the difference? I'm out of here. You've got 10 minutes. Good to see you, little brother. 
How's everyone holding up at home? I have something that I need to say to you. Okay. Aunt Charlotte told me the truth about the phone call from Barry Gordy. Reggie, I... How could you do that to me? You're my brother. Reggie, I was 20 years old. I had to make a lot of tough decisions. I did what I thought Mama and Daddy would have done, and that was for you to go to college. Now, you could have followed your dream after that if it was really that important to you. Reggie, please, I... You ruined my life. Hey, I'm gonna uh, meet George and the kids down at the pizza place, get a bite to eat. You wanna come? No. Well, what are you gonna do? You just gonna sit here and burn? No, I'm going to find the serial number on this thing, get my money, and start living. They shouldn't have lied to you, Reggie. But it's still family. I mean, if we can't get through the bad times, we just might not be around for the good. I'm not going to be around for any of it. OK, well, you know where we are if you change your mind. Hey, Reg. Andrew. How did you... Did Eleanor leave the door open? Yeah, something like that. What are you doing? I'm getting out of here. Yeah, you must be pretty angry after learning the truth about Barry Gordy. Who told you about that? You know those stories about angels who show up just exactly when you need them and they lead you right to what you're looking for? what I am. And you're looking in the right place, by the way. Keep looking. Uh, what is this? Something you needed to find, baby. Don't be afraid. We are angels. I was with your mama when she bought this piano. She bought it with money she saved from working second and third jobs. And you know why she did that? She wanted to keep music in your life. She should have told Martin and Aunt Charlotte. Reggie, everybody's dream gets stepped on sometime or another. Why didn't you fight for your dream? Wait, are you saying that this whole thing is my fault? No. I'm asking you, why did you give up on your dream so easily? Okay. My parents died. I didn't know what to think. All I really knew was that I hurt. Reggie, your brother and your aunt lost someone too. They were hurting too. Nobody was thinking clearly and your brother he made a mistake. He sure did. And why do you think he did that? Just to hurt you? I don't know. Yes, you do. He loves you. He was trying to protect you. Now, I'm not saying he did the right thing, but he did a loving thing. And you're going to have to give him some credit for that. But I never got to make a difference. I never even got to try. Well, you can make a difference right now. If you really want to sing, you get out there and sing with all your might. But remember this, all the success in the world will not make you happy if you don't have your family to share it with. God gave you many gifts because he loves you and he wants to share beauty and joy and music with you. And that's what your mama wanted too. Reggie, if you find this letter, 
It probably means that you're trying to sell this piano. But selling this piano won't solve your problems. Only God and your family will. You were born to make music with your life, baby. And I know somehow you always will. No matter where your life leads you, I want this piano to remind you that as long as you have family and a voice with which to pray, you'll always be able to find your way. Love, Mama. Oh, Mama. What should I do? Thank God for your blessed gifts. And give your family the best that you have. Your love, your music, and your forgiveness. How's it going out there? Gloria has a meeting this afternoon with the prosecutor. There's some new evidence. What? Apparently they found some blank pieces of paper with your signature repeated on them as if... As if someone was practicing my signature. Seems so. That's great! That alone will exonerate me. I mean, they'll be able to throw out this case and this nightmare will be over. What? It just seems a shame that it had to happen at all. Nothing I could have done about it. I was the victim. Martin, may I ask you a question? Did you pray about the loan before you approved it? Pray? Of course not. This is, uh, this is business. You pray before you eat your meal. You pray for your family. Why wouldn't you pray about the most important business decision you might ever make? Tell me the truth. Wasn't there a moment, or even more than that, when something in your spirit told you it might be wrong? I don't know what you're talking about. I think that you do. I think something told you not to do it, and you ignored it. You could have prayed, but you chose not to because you didn't want to hear the answer. Because you wanted to make the biggest loan that bank ever made. You wanted the credit, you wanted the vice president title, you wanted it all so much that you ignored the still small voice inside you that said no. Martin, you have made some very poor decisions in your life that have hurt yourself and your family because you didn't seek God's guidance. And even if you're completely absolved of this crime, you could still lose everything if you don't change your life today. I don't need to hear this from an employee! God! I'm finished! I was never just your employee, Mr. Hunter. I was your angel. God! I didn't expect you to come back. I wasn't going to. But something happened, Martin. Something really weird, but kind of wonderful. Something just happened to me, too. Um, can you ever forgive me? That's why I'm here. I've always loved you, you know that, right? I know. And I love you too. We're brothers. We're gonna get through this.
better way to honor our beloved Charlotte Hunter on this grand night of tributes than with a special family finale. Reggie. Come on, baby. You're gonna be just fine. Come on. I believe for every drop of rain that falls, a flower will grow. Ooh, and I believe that somewhere in the darkest night, kind of glows yes and I believe for everyone who goes astray somebody will come and show the way That someone in the great somewhere is listening to every word. I know, I know, every time I hear a newborn baby cry. When the babies cry. Or touch a leaf. Or just to touch a leaf. Or see the sky. Or see the That's why, that's why, that's why, that's why, I believe, I believe, I do believe, I really, really, I believe, yeah, 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 I believe. yeah, 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 I believe, I know you believe, I believe, and I, I, I Some things in our lives are determined by our choices. And some things we just get, like family. I've been very fortunate to grow up in a family that loved me enough not to ever let go. I thank God for them. And I thank God for showing me that the only dreams that are lost are the ones that you don't fight for. I've learned my lesson. Aunt Charlotte, your love and support have encouraged thousands. The impossible dream uh, to reach the unreachable star.
Monica. Good morning, Lady Barrington. Yes, yes, it is a good morning, isn't it? I believe I'm going to take my breakfast downstairs this morning, Monica. Of course, ma'am. Oh, has the weather changed? They say it might snow. Oh, well, we shall just have to carry on, won't we? Heaven. This afternoon you were born. And tonight. Tonight you're in China on your very first adventure. Now everybody finds their families in a different way, so we're just gonna sit right here and wait for yours. some time. Your parents are in America and they don't actually know about you yet. Is there anything about snow in there? Let's see. Monica mentioned snow this morning. She seems like a very pleasant sort. Don't you think so, Sarah? I like her very much. She does twice the work and half the time somehow. Really? Is that true, Edmund? Her performance has been quite satisfactory, your ladyship. Well, does she make a good cup of tea? We shall have to find that out. I'll put that on the to-do list. Right after the annual report and the stockholders meeting. Sarah, dear, how are you feeling today? Quite well, thank you. Hmm. Edmund, would you be kind enough to go to the kitchen and assist Monica in making her first pot of tea? The one thing that I really like about America is that they don't waste time getting to the point. So let's have it. Hmm? The in vitro didn't work again. Oh, I'm so sorry, dear. Well, it's a good thing that Monica's making tea. A cup of tea will do you the world of good, you know. Grandmother, you're starting to quote your own tea commercials. And why not? It's absolutely true. A good cup of tea and time to think. And who knows? By this time next month, you'll be ready to try again. Hmm? It's been six hours. Doctor said it would take at least that long for the blood test to come back. Come on, let's take a walk. What would happen, really, if we never got pregnant? You mean if we adopted it? Mm -hmm. Well, 
my grandmother would swoon, and then she would rave on and on about <laughs> 500 years of Barrington English blood, and then she would make, make a, a cup, cup of, of tea. tea. <laughs> a cup of tea will do the world of good, my dear. <laughs> <clears throat> and as for me, if the only new and precious thing that we ever create together is our happy marriage. I will consider myself a very lucky man. I love you. Now we shall see if Edmund has taught you well. Very nice. Quite good, actually. <laughs> but this isn't Barrington tea. No, ma'am. I, I took the liberty of brewing my own blend of tea leaves. Really? <laughs> Do I detect a hint of... What is that, carob? Coffee, ma'am. Just a hint. Ah, an entrepreneur. We shall have to keep our eye on you, Monica. Yes, ma'am. Would you be kind enough to inform my granddaughter-in-law that it's tea time? Americans never quite grasp the importance of it, you know. Yes, ma'am. Excuse me, Mrs. Barrington. Tea is served. There are some things that a cup of tea can't fix, you know? Yes, I know. Where are you from? Oh, well, I've worked all over the world. As a maid? As a maid or teacher. Sometimes a nanny. Those are always my favorite. You must love children. Yes, I do. You must have noticed these last weeks that I've been taking fertility shots. Yes. Well, we've gone through in vitro five times, and we found out today it, uh, it isn't working. Well, that must tell you something, then. I guess so. May I ask you a question? Do you want to be pregnant, or do you want to be a mother to a child? Do you need to give life, or is it enough just to give love? No, well, we've thought a lot about adoption, but it's complicated. I believe the children are a gift from God, and if you're ready to accept that gift, he can handle the complications. God obviously doesn't know Lady Penelope Barrington. Good morning, little one. <laughs> Oh, 
They're naming you Meg Way. Do you know what that means? It means Rose. Hi, I'm Gloria. So what's next? Well, fill out the application, start getting your dossier together, and read these. Every country has different requirements. Um, what is the home study? Well, we assign an adoption caseworker to your family, and he or she comes to your house, interviews everybody who lives there, and basically makes sure that your home is a fit place to raise a child. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, her ladyship's going to love that. Mm. I will not have a complete stranger walking into my home and inspecting me as if I was a mackerel. Grandmother. It's outrageous. She said it was a casual me I suppose they'll ask me all sorts of impertinent questions as to, did I spank your father when he was three? And the answer is, yes, I did. He kicked the vicar in the shins and I, I gave him a good wallop. But I'll not apologize for that. This is more about me and James and how we live and where we live and whether we'll be good parents. Well, of course you'll make good parents. So you're saying you think we should adopt? Well, I'd just rather that you didn't. But I think you know that. I mean, I don't suppose that in 1783 Lord Geoffrey of Barrington ever imagined that his glorious bloodline of British aristocracy would end in America with a home inspection by a clipboard carrying caseworker. I know, and I feel... Let me finish, Sarah, please. If this is something you must do, then I suppose you will do it. But personally, I feel that if you would both just stop working so hard at trying to make babies and relax a little, you might be surprised at what might happen. And that's all I have to say on the subject. Well, I think we'll at least move forward with the next step. Monica, there will be two for dinner. I'm not hungry. Yes, ma'am. are James and Sarah. I haven't met them yet, but I hear they're wonderful people. God picked them out just for you. Andrew? What's the matter? There's been a complication. representative from the adoption agency is here, madam. Ah, the Grand Inquisitor. My name is Tess. Penelope Barrington. <laughs> Please, won't you have a seat? Oh, yes, but could you just give me a moment to admire this marvelous house? Oh, yes, please. <laughs> this house has many happy memories. I raised my son here, and when he died, 
I raised my grandson here. And started a business of your own, too, I understand. Yes, although James handles everything for me. I simply enjoy having the fun of meddling and intruding at will. It must be exciting to think of raising another generation of Barringtons in this place. Yes. Please excuse me when I see what's happened to the children. Tendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows roll. Whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, It is well, it is well with my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul. With my soul, it is well. It, it is well with my soul. Oh, that was very nice. It's such a marvelous old hymn. And you harmonize beautifully. Well, thank you. You know, I haven't sung that song since. Well, it was a long time ago. I hear someone playing the piano. Oh, yes. My name is Tess. So nice to meet you. I'm James, and this is Sarah. How are you? Hello. Well, shall we get started? I really can't believe we're doing this. <laughs> Please. Thank you. We have the birth certificates, the health certificates, and the marriage certificate. Oh, and I will have to interview anyone else in your household who will have daily contact with your child. Good heavens, is that really necessary? I mean, really all you're doing is investigating your options, aren't you? Grandma, I thought we were clear. This is what we want to do. If we're approved, we're going to adopt a baby from somewhere. Ah, that reminds me. Because of your ages and your length of marriage, your options for country of origin have been narrowed down to Korea and China. Uh, China. I, I don't think we have a pamphlet from there. But it sounds very interesting. I've always wanted to go to China. Oh, I would think you, being in the tea business, would have gone often. No, we've never imported tea from China. Grandma has... Does anyone find it ironic that any reprobate on the street can become a parent, and yet good people like you and Sarah have to be investigated like criminals before you can be trusted with a child? That's the process. Well, I'm not very impressed with the process. Grandma. Do you have everything you need from me? I do. Well, then, will you please excuse me? You almost ruined it for us today. What the hell were you thinking? Don't use that tone of voice with me, James. And I'll tell you exactly what I was thinking. I couldn't believe that things had gotten this far with you children. We're not children. We're almost 40 years old. We can't get pregnant. There are plenty of kids out there who need good parents without us running around like science experiments just to satisfy our own vanity. I'm not interested in your vanity. I'm interested in your heritage. And quite frankly, the image of plenty of children out there. Oh, it makes me cold with fear. James, really, I mean, there's enough money in this family to solve this problem with the aid of doctors, if necessary. 
instead of rolling the dice and letting some stranger pull a child out of a hat. I can't believe I'm hearing this. All I'm saying is that you should consider your lineage. Adoption is a last resort. And we haven't exhausted our options. We? This is not your baby, Grandma, and this is not your decision. I love you, but this 19th century British Empire mentality only works in the tea business. You can't impose that elitist class system crap on human beings, and I will be damned if I let you lay that on my child. A violinist, really? Well, just look at those hands. She could be a surgeon. Hmm, now there's a thought. Just imagine, someone walked down that road and did the hardest thing she's ever had to do. Say goodbye to you, little one. Just to give you a chance at a better future. <gasps> Don't cry. I know it's cold, but your parents will be here soon. You should prepare yourself, Gloria. Sometimes humans get lost on the way to a miracle. Yes, I'm so glad to see you again. I believe I owe you an apology. Well, thank you very much, but I'll get right to the point. James and Sarah's application for adoption was not approved. Oh, what a shame. Yes, it is. The household background checks came back this morning from immigration and the FBI. And according to them, Lady Penelope of Barrington never immigrated to the United States from England or any other British territory. And if she had, she'd be 130 years old. Shall I tell them, or will you? Is this going to take very long? I'm actually pretty busy right now. Business can wait. There's something that I need to tell you. Please don't leave. I want you to hear this too, Edmund. Your ladyship. We weren't approved, were we? No. And I am at fault. I knew it. James. Parents need to know how to listen. This is a good chance to practice. Here we go, baby. They couldn't find any evidence of me immigrating to the United States. And there was very good reason for that. Lady Barrington never immigrated. Gladys Pickett did. Who is Gladys Pickett? I am. Um, I was found by Lord and Lady Barrington in an orphanage outside London in 1941. I was 16 years old and they took me in as their maid. They were wonderful people, aristocratic in the best sense. And despite the fact that they'd lived modestly, they, they had none of their fortune left. They had no children and no living relatives. Only an orphan girl who cooked and cleaned for them and absolutely adored them. In the evenings, I used to make a big pot of tea and we'd all sit around the fireplace and Lord Bellington would tell us stories about their lives and about the lives of their ancestors. And you know, at the end of the night, he would say to me, Gladys, that's one for your grandchildren. I can't even believe this. A little less judging and a little more listening. 
They were very old, of course. They died before the end of the war. There was very little notice made of it. But the bank got their little mill house and I returned to London. And it was there that I fell in love with the most marvelous man. He was a brave and kind American pilot. Your grandfather, James. He was shot down just a month before the end of the war. How awful. Yes, yes it was. I was a war widow with a new baby and no money. But the one thing I knew how to do was to make the perfect cup of tea. So Gladys Pickett made her way to America where I opened a tea shop and I called it Lady Barrington's. I bought a few impressive anonymous portraits and put them on the wall and said they were my ancestors. And I regaled the customers with stories that Lord Barrington had told me. And do you know something we just took off? Suddenly, I was a corporation. And you know, in a strange way, I was Lady Barrington. No, you weren't. It helped me to raise my son and to, to make a better life for my family. And it was also one way to remember those two people who deserve to be remembered. I know that it was a deception, but I don't believe that I ever dishonored their name. Maybe not, but you dishonored yourself, and you dishonored your parents, whoever they were, and me. Whoever I am. Would you care for a fresh pot of tea, your ladyship? Thank you, Edmund, but you, you don't have to call me that anymore. I'm not a lady. I beg to differ, my lady. Thank you. You know, Tess, this has been the most difficult thing that I've ever done. And yet, I feel the most wonderful sense of relief. Of course you do. You haven't been yourself for 50 years. What am I going to do about James? You've already told him who you are not. Now you need to tell him who you are. You're working for a hypocritical liar, Monica. You better get out before she tells you you're the Queen of Sweden or something. A person is more than the sum of their ancestors, Mr. Barrington. You're a man of integrity. Well-educated and much loved. And that's not because your ancestors were aristocrats. That's true because your grandmother raised you that way. Where are you going? We are going to stay at a hotel until we find a place of our own. Oh, no, James, please. We should have done it long ago. Oh, I never should have lied to you. I'm so sorry. I want you to know who your great-grandparents really were. And about China. China? Yes. I was brought up in China. My parents were missionaries. And they believed the best way to teach their faith was to live their faith. So they worked in the fields. They unbound the feet of the children in the villages. They took in orphans. And when the Japanese invaded northern China, they held their ground as long as they could. I was just a child, and I, I didn't understand. I was only 12. All I did know was that everyone was so frightened. I can't remember what day it was, but it was 1937. And the Japanese were so close. You see, we could feel the bombs that were dropping on the other side of the hill. Even with the invading army approaching, it is well with my soul. It saddens me 
that this will be our last service together for a time, but I know that our Lord will watch over us all until we meet again. There were trucks waiting Lord outside to evacuate all of the foreign missionaries to Shanghai as soon as the service was over. From there we would board ships for England. We thought we still had time. Let us recall tonight. There was so much noise and confusion. Everyone began crawling towards the door. Everyone except my best friend, Nina. Come on! No, my family must stay here. You are the one who in danger. But they say the soldiers will take all the food. The Lord will provide. Here, this is almost real gold. If you need food, you can sell it. It's got the Lord's prayer on one side and a picture of my family on the other. So you can always remember us. Thank you. You are my very best friend. I ran outside screaming for my parents. It was so dark. There was such chaos and the truck drivers were terrified and started leaving without us. Somebody picked me up and threw me on a truck as it drove away. I prayed all the way to Shanghai that my parents would be on another truck. I waited at the international settlement in Shanghai for six weeks. But they never came. Eventually, I, I was put on a steamer to England and placed in an orphanage. Until Lord and Lady Barrington took me in. I never saw my parents again. Oh, I can't even remember what they looked like. It must have been terrible, Grandma. I'm so sorry. Yes, and I, I know it sounds perfectly ghastly, but I can't help believing that if I hadn't gone back to see my friend, I would have found my parents that night. And I know it wasn't her fault. Oh, no, it was mine. But if I have to look at the face of a little Chinese girl in this house every day, it will be a constant reminder of what I did and what I lost. Oh. If you want to adopt, then adopt. I have no business telling you not to. But please, please anything but a Chinese girl. <laughs> Monica, you've become indispensable to us the short time you've been here. Thank you, ma'am. You know James and Sarah may be getting a place of their own. I'm sure they'd be very pleased to have you. Thank you, ma'am. But I'm here to serve you. Oh, I appreciate your loyalty. But somehow, I don't think that will be necessary any longer. Actually, ma'am, it's more necessary than you realize. I am an angel. Oh, my goodness. Are you some, some sort of supernatural being? I am an angel, Gladys. God has sent me here with a message for you. This is, this is too much. <laughs> God loves you. And it was never his will that you should lose your parents as you did. It was never his will that you should lose your own self as you chose to do. God does not will all that happens in this world. But he does will something good out of everything that happens. But for that, you have to trust him to take you to places that you're afraid to go.
Gladys, I don't know what God's purpose is in all of this. Why James and Sarah have been childless or why their pain has opened up the pain of your past. But I do know that from the moment one particular little girl was born half a world away, God already had a plan for her and for James and Sarah and for you. And of all the countries that he could have chosen for their child to be born, for some reason, he chose China. Will you trust him now? Has everybody got their passports? Yes. Jack your pocket. Nappies, baby food, whitey things, concentrated formula. I can't believe in three days we're going to be parents. Grandma, let's go. Hey, wait, don't forget this. What is in here? I feel very strange having an angel for a maid. Enjoy it while you can. 65 years, Monica. I can't imagine even that it's still there. You're not going to China to find the mission, Gladys. You're going to find peace. I'm going to miss talking to you, Rose. I'm going to ask God to let me check in on you from time to time just to make sure you're doing okay. Although I'm sure you will be. They're here. Okay. You smile. I never forget that God loves you, Rose. So do I. Oh, look at you. You are so beautiful. Hey, I've been wondering about you. <laughs> Oh, James. Isn't she precious? What do you think? She's a miracle. James, Sarah, there are some forms inside to be signed. Oh, uh, okay. Grandma, how about you get to know uh, your great granddaughter oh, a little bit? Yes. Oh, 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 yes. Oh, yes. 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 Oh, no, 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 it's all right. She likes to be on her back. Look up at your face. Oh, yes, of course. Thank you. We call her Nickwin. It means Rose. <laughs> when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, Whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. With my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul. The Lord's Prayer on one side. 
you and your family on other. It is a miracle. Glory I start the orphanage many years ago in your memory. Oh. Memory of my friends. Memory of your faith. And my faith too. I almost sell it many times. But I remember your sacrifice for me. Grandparents. They were missionaries. And they were wonderful, wonderful people. I come from a long line of wonderful people. And you are the next generation. <laughs> oh. Oh. seen this equation before. E equals mc squared. No, I'm not talking about Einstein's theory of relativity. This is Costello's theory of success. E is for effectiveness. An effective sales force uses marketing multiplied by charm and being square with your customers. <laughs> That's the same groan I got when I tried to explain it to my daughter Kimmy. She said to me, Daddy, what's the worst thing that a salesperson can do? Anybody here know? Everybody give up? That is the worst thing that a salesperson can do. Give up! Now, everything we've covered this His morning... His name is Don Costello. Him. He's a motivational speaker. He seems very good at it. It's easy to talk to talk, but walking to walk is hard. Yes, of course. I'm sorry, come again? Don is better at telling other people what to do than doing it himself. The case file. This assignment has been around before you were created. We need you to catch up quickly. Let me tell you something else about my daughter. Uh, uh, Kimmy was born with a learning disability you've probably all heard about. It's called ADD, Attention Deficit Disorder. We were told that she would never do well in school. But Kimmy had her heart set on being a doctor. She wanted to help people. So, while her friends went off to be teenagers after school every day, Kimmy went home and studied. She never gave up. Now, if a high school girl can overcome an obstacle like that, then why not you? Uh, my time's up. Uh, but before I go, there are evaluation forms in your packets. If you take a minute to fill them out before the break, I'd appreciate it. After lunch, you'll have some other know-it-all in here telling you how to do your jobs. Thanks for having me. Uh, how am I doing so far, Monica? You're quite a dynamic speaker. Thanks. So is that uh, all there is to it? No, we still need to sit down and go over the audience evaluation forms before I hand in my final report. Oh, um, listen, any chance that uh, we could do that later? Sure. Uh, say 
three o'clock. I like to work out of my home as much as possible these days. Um. Hey, Monica, this is my wife, Stacy. Hi, hello. Hello. Son, Justin. Uh, Monica's doing my performance evaluation this year. She's uh, going to be coming by the house this afternoon to let me know if I still have a job. Well, of course, you'll still have a job. You're a wonderful speaker. Don't let the false modesty fool you, Monica. He's the best. That's nice to hear. Uh, I'll see you at three. Excuse us. When did you start using Kimmy in your presentation? What difference does it make? What are you doing here? Justin was in a fight at school. He's been suspended until he gets counseling. We have an appointment in half an hour. Impressive, isn't he? Yeah, he used to be, until he became obsessed with talking about his daughter. Well, she is a good example. She was. His daughter's dead. It was terrible. It's a real tragedy. And now, this family is falling apart. When you walk down the road, heavy burden, heavy load, I will run. And I will walk with you I'll walk with you Till the sun don't even shine Walk with you Every time I tell you I'll walk with you Believe me, I'll walk with you Tess, we need to go Yes Going? Where? This is a very unusual assignment, Gloria. There are a lot of different threads that need to be pulled together very quickly. You've only got a few minutes to bring her up to speed. Up until about a year ago, the Costellos were a very happy group. They had the same problems that other families do, but they were full of love and life and so many plans for the future. Hi, Mom. Hey, honey. How's your day? Just perfect. Remember how wonderful life is when the cutest boy in school likes you. You? Really? Well, don't worry, I won't tell Daddy. It was your daddy. Oh. <laughs> oh, don't make any plans next Saturday. I signed you up for the SATs. Mom, I've already taken them twice. And you did better on them the second time. If you want to be a doctor, you need to get into a good college. Well, there goes another Saturday. Hi, Kimbo. Hi, Dad. Bye, Dad. And that actually passes as a heart-to-heart -heart talk for us. So sit by her at dinner tonight. So just want to talk about Blake. What's she see in that guy anyway? Mm -hmm. Let's see. He's handsome, charming, a football star. I can't imagine what it could be. <laughs> hey, honey. Hey. Yeah, how was school, bud? Did any of my teachers call? No. And it was great. <laughs> Watch the hair. Daddy, can Blake come with us to dinner tonight? Friday's family night. Blake's family? Kind of, sort of. He's not jumping up and down. Blake is on the phone. Hi, Blake. My mom says hi. My dad doesn't. Daddy, I'll love you forever if you say yes. You won't love me forever anyway? He's changing the subject. All right, fine. Yes! Okay. 5 p.m. tonight at Robintino's. Oh, and wear that blue button-down shirt. It goes so great with your eyes. Come here. Here's your, you're a good dad hug. <laughs> <laughs> you need to get going, Gloria. Yeah? Yeah, it's time. We were lucky this doctor could see us on such short notice. This is so stupid. No. Getting into a fight at school is stupid. 
Hi. Thanks for waiting. You must be the Costellos. Yes. Hi. Um, this is Justin. Hi, Justin. I'm Gloria. Don't be rude, Justin. Doctor said hello. Hey. What do you want us to do, Gloria? Well, there's a nice little French burger joint around the corner. I think it's called Chez Mou. <laughs> You and your wife could go grab a little lunch and then meet me back here in an hour. Justin, you're with me. I don't have time for lunch. I've got to get ready for my meeting with Monica. Fine. I have to be somewhere, too. I'll uh, pick up Justin in an hour. Good afternoon. Oh, certainly is. Beautiful day to be alive. I'm glad to hear you say that, Dorothy. Um, <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm so bad with names. My name's Andrew. I'm an angel. Oh, an angel. As in... As in messenger from God. Look, we don't usually like to spring this on people all at once, but frankly, Dorothy, I'm a little short of time. Your vice principal says a classmate invited you to play football, and you started punching him. You have him two black eyes. Not a football fan, huh? Drop humor. So, what's the deal, Monica? I've been doing this for years. I've never once gotten a personal call from the evaluation police. Yes, it's true. Over the years, your evaluations as a motivator have been among the highest in the company's history. People know when you're being straight with them. Yeah, I believe they do. Let's see. Fresno, ten months ago. Knows his stuff, but I felt manipulated when he mentioned his little girl. Can't please everybody. San Diego, six months ago. I was with him until he started using his daughter, Kimmy, to make points. I thought it was a cheap shot. Okay, but those are old. This one is from today. Hated him bringing up his dead daughter in his speech. I never say she's dead. With all due respect, Don, it was in the news. And perhaps, as you say, people do know when you're being straight with them. Justin, I'm working. Whatever it is, ask your mother. She never came to get me. I had to walk home. We can continue this tomorrow if you'd prefer. I'd appreciate that. I'll see myself out. She never showed up. Great. Where is she now? I remember when I was seven. My mom used to take me to the park. I want to stay forever and ever. Oh, wouldn't that be nice, Kimmy? Can I go on the slide? Sure. I'll wait right here till you get back. Promise? Cross my heart and hope to... after dark, ma'am. You'll have to go. So when everyone asks where Stacy, this is where she is. And she comes here every day? Yes. And it's getting harder for her to leave. There's no milk. Oh, they're forecasting snow again. Ten years of one-page written evaluations, and now they send somebody in person. What's that all about? Shouldn't it be spring by now? The whole thing is ridiculous. 
Can I have some potatoes? <sighs> Ten years. Doesn't make any sense. Justin. You have things bottled up inside you. Things that make you sad and angry. You feel like you can't talk to your parents or your teachers or your friends or anyone about them. But you can talk to me. Okay. I'll be here when you're ready. No rush. Now, I know it's a shock, and I know it's hard to understand, but it's true. I am an angel. Dios mío, no sé qué hacer. Tengo tanto miedo. Calm down, Rosalita. A visit from an angel is a good thing. Well, that's the silliest thing I ever heard of. Of course girls should play sports and be doctors. But what if I'm better than all the boys? Well, that's their problem. In the real world, there aren't men's jobs and women's jobs. They're just jobs, period. And they should go to the person who is the best educated and the most qualified. And that'll be you, Kimmy. How come you didn't want a career? Hmm. I had one. But then after you and Justin were born, I... It was just one career I really cared about. And that was being your mom. Woohoo! All right, mom! Thank you. So. Why do you talk about your daughter in your seminars? She's a great example of what hard work can do. Yes, but you only started talking about her after she was killed. Look, I know that Kimmy's death is understandably still very painful for you, but... I know you have to evaluate me. And if you need to write me a bad report, then do what you got to do, but leave my family out of it. Dawn, I'm merely suggesting that you might be suppressing a great deal of anger. I'm not angry. Of course you're angry. You're angry because your daughter was killed. You're angry because you were helpless to do anything about it. But you have to let that anger out, Dawn. You've got to let it go if you're going to heal. I'm not angry. You're wrong. I believe I have what I need for this evaluation. What are you reading? Something interesting here in your file. Uh, a family dinner a little over a year ago at a place called Robin Tino's. Well, it wouldn't be Friday night without the Costellos. We'll need an extra chair tonight, Rocco. An extra chair? Long story. Don't ask. <laughs> Thanks, Rocco. No, no, no amore. Just dinner. Ew. Hi, Mrs. Costello. Oh, hi, Blake. Mr. Costello, it's nice to see you again. Blake. Hey, Justin. Oh, hey, Blake. Oh, sit next to me. <clears throat> he can sit next to both of us. Kimmy got her driver's license in the mail today. Mom. Let's see it. No, let's not. I had a bad hair day. Oh, I bet you look great. Got that incredible smile. Really? 
So, you still thinking about going out for peewee football this summer? Totally. We gotta get together. I'll show you some moves. Sure. Yeah. Justin? Justin, are you okay? I'm not talking about it. No, no, don't go. Don't go. Don't, 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 don't. No, you don't get it. What? It's my fault that Kimmy's dead. It's all my fault. Justin, I'm here to help you. But I can't unless you let me. You're hurting, and you want it to stop. You can trust me, and if you'll just look at me, you'll know I'm telling the truth. That day, the day it happened, it even started off weird. Did you hurry up? I'm going to be late. Chill, Waldo. I need a favor. You're not doing your chores again. Not that. I think Blake may come over later. Cool. Not cool. I don't want to see him anymore. Well, how come? He's starting to creep me out. It's like he's two different people or something, and it's just getting on my nerves. So just don't tell him I'm going to the library after school, okay? Yeah, okay. Thanks. As well those go, you're not so bad. Watch the hair. We never did anything bad to me. I didn't want anything bad to happen to her. Of course not. Why did I do it? What did you do, Justin? Stacy. How can a person forget their keys every time? Oh, I thought you were my wife. I'm here to apologize. I realize now that I was long on evaluating and short on listening. But if you'd like to do the talking, I promise I'll listen. You raise your kids to think for themselves. And then they stop listening to you. I'm sure that Kimmy appreciated everything you did. She was going to be valedictorian, you know. She wrote her own speech for graduation. And the night before she died, she uh, actually let me read it. I just couldn't resist making a suggestion. So that's it? Just throw it out and start over? It sounds like a speech. It is a speech. Look, your ideas are smart, but if you want to motivate people, you have to make them feel something. You have to write from your heart. Look, just because you do this for a living doesn't mean I stink. I, I didn't say that. Look, I'm just trying to help. I didn't want your help. I just wanted you to... Never mind. I didn't have to be so blunt but i'd had a bad day and i was too tired to be whatever it was she wanted i figured i'd make it up to her later but i didn't get the chance how many times do we say i'll do it later i'll fix it next week i'll say i'm sorry tomorrow well, that's the problem I blew it. Now, it's too late for Kimmy and me. And it hurts like hell. I know it does. You're not the typical performance evaluator from the main office. That's not what you need. I think you need a friend. Hey, what are you doing home so early? Um, Justin has something he needs to share with you and your wife, Mr. Costello.
I had a dream last night. I was old like you. I'm sorry, dearie. Can you speak up a little bit? <laughs> you know what I mean. It was amazing. I, I lived in this beautiful house, and I had twins named Taylor and Tyler. And I was a country doctor, and all the kids called me Dr. Kimmy. And then I come home at night and feed the twins and put them to bed. And my husband would take me out dancing, and then we'd come back home and just stand there watching our children sleep and be in love. Oh, it's a nice dream. Well, what if it doesn't come true? When I was your age, I wanted a dog named Bo and a husband named Rick. Oh, wait, it wasn't a dog named Rick and a husband named Bo. I can't remember. <laughs> What you want at 17 isn't what you wanted when you were seven. And it may not be what you want when you're 27. But what if I want it all? The perfect family, the perfect career. I want to make a difference somehow. From the minute you were born, I knew you were going to make a difference. You will. I know it. I hope so. <laughs> Race you home. Wait! Wait. What's going on? Justin has something he needs to tell us. It's about when Kimmy died. Um... I... Could we talk about this later? After dinner? We have company, and I, I should really get to the store. No, I think we should deal with this now. Go ahead, Justin. That day, I was in the yard. I made a promise to Kimmy. Heads up! And I broke it. Hey, Kimmy home? Nah. Oh. Where is she? Um, I don't know. No? Not really. Justin, you have a girlfriend? Nah. Let me tell you something about girls. They'll run away from you, but they really want you to chase after them. And they say that they don't want to talk to you anymore just to watch you beg. It's like some little game they play. You know what I'm talking about? I guess so. <laughs> I knew you would. Hey, go for a pass. So, I looked everywhere, but uh, she's not at school, right? Nah. She's at the big library, over on Green Street. Right, right. Hey, go long. Don't say I told you, okay? They are secret. Shh. Go deep. Costello, going long. Fix one man, then another. He's in the clear. He's open. Lake went to the library. I told you, Blake, it's over. Look, I know, I don't deserve you, I messed up. Just let me apologize, and I'll take you home. Give me 30 seconds. 20? 8? I'm sorry, I'll miss you. 5.
Justin has been blaming himself the whole time. He used you, and he would have used anyone to find her, and he would have found her. The guy was sick, Justin. That's not your fault. <gasps> oh, look at the time. I've got to get to the park. Stacy, are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. It's just that it's getting dark outside, and Kimmy's not home yet. Oh, but I know where she is. I'll, I'll go get her. I wish I was the one who was dead. That's not the answer. I know. I just wish it were. What are you doing? This is what I do at times like this. I'm an angel. Whoa. A real angel? Mm hmm And God sent me to tell you that he knows you would never do anything to hurt Kimmy. And Kimmy knows it too. Kimmy's with God? Like, in heaven? Mm hmm Does she know how much I miss her? Yes, she does. And there's something she wants you to know. But you have to come with me to find out. Come on. I knew, subconsciously, that all those disappearing acts she pulled weren't normal. Sometimes she'd go out for milk and come home three hours later empty-handed. I knew. She was out there somewhere, dealing with it in her own way. Just as you have dealt with it in your way and Justin in his way. Three people alone instead of one family together. I don't think there is a family anymore. Incredible, isn't it? One day in the life of a teenage girl, and suddenly, she's gone. And so are we. One day. That was the day that your hearts were broken. Today is the day that they can be healed again. Don't be afraid, Donald. I'm an angel. What? I am the answer to your prayer. The prayer you made the night that Kimmy was found. It wasn't a prayer. It was... a scream. took me into that room and I saw the, the bruises around my baby's throat. And I cursed God. Damn you. I hate you. You let this happen. And I hate you. Rather that you pray to him honestly than not at all. God hears you when you call to him. And he knows what no one else does. He knows that you cry alone at night here in this room. 
He knows the agonizing pain that you feel. He knows you feel so helpless as you watch your family disintegrating. And God says, Donald, I am strength where you are helpless. I am peace where there is pain. Let me wipe away every tear and hold you as I hold your little girl even now. Daughter, have you seen her? She's with. She's with. Kimmy's not here, Stacy. No, I saw her here this afternoon. I... Do I know you? My name's Andrew. Our paths have crossed. Oh, she's playing hide and seek. Stacy, God created you to live in the real world. That's where he wants you to be, not here. Come out, come out, wherever you are. You know Kimmy isn't here. You know that she's... No. Leave me alone. Kimmy? Kimmy, Mommy is very unhappy with you. Stop it. And listen to me. What? Your daughter is at peace. What are you? What? Some sort of angel or something? I am. Well, you're too late. Go away. I can't. I can't leave you alone any more than I could have left Kimmy alone. I was an angel with Kimmy. I was in the car. I was in the hospital, and I was with her the moment that she died. Then why didn't you do something? Why didn't you do something? I did. I took her home. <laughs> she was never alone, Stacy. Never alone. This is Costello. Oh, welcome. Oh, welcome back. It's been so long. Mm -hmm. Too long. Private party. Oh. Well, another night then. You don't know? No, the party's right. for you. Too? Yes. Welcome. Okay. Who are all these people? I have no idea. I'm just going with the flow now, honey. I'm glad you're here. She left something behind for you. Kimmy's graduation speech? She rewrote it after she read it to you. You need to read it now. Hello. Uh, I'm, I'm not really sure why we're all here tonight. <laughs> or why I'm about to read this to you, but... Uh, this was a graduation speech. No one ever got to hear. I always wanted to do this, give the graduation speech. But now that I am, I'm not really going to give it at all. My real one, the one I always practiced in my head, said things like, we are the future, blah, blah, blah. Then I read it to my dad. 
And he told me to throw it and start over. He said I had to speak from the heart. I was so mad at him until I realized he was right. My dad isn't perfect. He works too hard. His jokes aren't that funny. And he has terrible taste in music. But he loves our family more than anything. And I know that years from now, when I look back on my life, I won't be stressing about how he made me mad. I'll be remembering everything he and my mom ever did for me. Especially telling me the truth when I didn't want to hear it. That must be so hard for parents. But they do it anyway. They believe in us and support us. And that's why we're here tonight. And I think we should give all our parents a big round of applause. And oh yeah, we are the future and it's going to be great. Blah, blah, blah. This was the speech my daughter never got to give. Her name was Kimmy. Kim. They know, Don. They know. They do. How? Oh. Kimmy had something for you, too. Wow. Well, that was a bad hair day. <laughs> <laughs> the amazing part's on the back. Working donor card. I'm Dorothy Fleming. Grand Rapids, Michigan. I had type 1 diabetes for 20 years. I was on dialysis forever. I'd given up hope of ever getting a kidney transplant. And then I did. From Kimmy. When I was pregnant, I began to lose my sight. And my let me see it, so I, I thanked God for my gift, but I never thought about who had given it to me. I have more than two eyes. I have part of a wonderful I person, a beautiful family. name is Harrison Abbott, and this is my daughter Sarah, Norwood, Ohio. Sarah needed a liver transplant, and we just about lost her three times. Mr. and Mrs. Costello, I know that your daughter will never be pregnant. But thanks to her, mine will. And when she does, We'll be thinking about you. In your thoughts. They asked us. We were in the hospital. They said yes. We were so. No. We were so. I've helped all these people. My dream came true after all. She did make a difference. My name's Tommy. I was sick by all life. I wasn't ever supposed to live very long. They told me now that I could even get old. I got Kim's heart. I'm sorry. No. No. No, Tommy, it's okay. It's a strong heart. It's a powerful heart. It's a good heart to have.
thought you might like this. <sighs> Who wants to see what Kimmy looked like? 